John Henry Patterson was an industrialist and entrepreneur. NCR Corporation is bigger than you think. It has around $7.16 billion in annual revenue and 38,000 employees work there. Apart from creating this huge company, John Henry Patterson was known for firing Thomas Watson, who later founded IBM. Yep, even the IBM founder worked at NCR. After high school, Patterson schooled at Miami University, Oxford, Ohio. One of their operations was a general and grocery store in Colton, Ohio, who sold supplies to the miners. In 1878, a man named James Riddy had developed the first wooden cash register. Patterson went on to sell thousands and tens of thousands of register machines, eventually dominating the world. The NCR also began the acquisition of smaller competing firms to form a monopoly. Through aggressive marketing and advertising, by 1914, the company was producing 110,000 cash registers every year. In 1991, AT&T acquired the NCR Corporation but decided to end its control of the corporation in 1997. NCR boasts of being the largest maker of ATMs but derives most of its revenues from selling software and similar services. He formed his own business and started selling register machines. It was a huge success and later became one of the largest companies in the world. John Henry Patterson was an industrialist and entrepreneur who was in the limelight in the late 1800s and early 1900s. He is infamous for his investment in two, and the eventual takeover of the National Manufacturing Company, later named National Cash Register Company, and the rights to James Riddy's incorruptible cashier. NCR Corporation is bigger than you think. It has around $7.16 billion in annual revenue, and 38,000 employees work there. Though it's possible you've never heard about the company, I'm sure you've used their products. If you've ever used an ATM machine and have paid via credit card, again, many POS machines used are built by NCR. Apart from creating this huge company, John Henry Patterson was known for firing Thomas Watson, who later founded IBM. Yep, even the IBM founder worked at NCR. Want to know how John Henry Patterson built this company and what his story is? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinary successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. John Henry Patterson was born to Jefferson Patterson and Julia Johnston on the family farm in Dayton, Ohio on December 13th of 1844. He spent most of his childhood working on the family farm and at his father's sawmill. In an attempt to ensure the family maintained its wealth, his parents instilled in him a near tyrannical control of his life. After high school, Patterson schooled at Miami University, Oxford, Ohio. He later attended and graduated from Dartmouth College in 1867. While in college, he took teaching jobs to cover his expenses. In 1864, he served in the Union Army for about 100 days on voluntary duty. This move was in response to the appeal made by President Lincoln for volunteers to serve the country. He was enlisted in the 131st OVI and was discharged on the 25th of August of 1864, after which he returned to Miami University. After graduating from Dartmouth College, he returned to Ohio and immediately went into business. He started as a toll collector on a canal and later went into the sales of coal and wood. In 1879, Patterson partnered with one of his brothers to operate coal mines and retail coal yards. One of their operations was a general and grocery store in Colton, Ohio, who sold supplies to the miners. While operating this store, Patterson noticed after three years that although they'd made an annual sale of up to $50,000 worth of goods, they were worse off than nothing. They were in debt and couldn't even account for it or understand why. He'd soon find out that his employees were failing to collect from credit customers and were giving supplies away to their friends and families. In 1878, a man named James Riddy had developed the first wooden cash register, popularly known then as the incorruptible cashier, to eliminate employee theft. Patterson bought four of the machines, and soon he was no longer experiencing the losses that once ravaged his operations. Gradually, he invested in the cash register business, and by 1884, had full control of the business as well as its patents. It was after this takeover that he renamed the company the National Cash Register Company. At this time, Patterson was 40 years old. From that moment onward, he devoted his life to controlling the cash register business and getting the registry into every retail store and saloon in the world. Patterson went on to sell thousands and tens of thousands of register machines, eventually dominating the world. But the road to such achievement is never easy, and Patterson's case was far from being an exception. He faced great opposition from the retail stores and saloon clerks, who interpreted the buying of a cash register by their boss as an indication of his lack of trust in them. In the early years of the company's operation, few cash registers were sold due to opposition and apathy. 
The company grew quite slowly, producing only 16,000 registers in the first decade of its operation. However, Patterson was confident that what he needed to do was make business owners understand how the register would prove invaluable in theft reductions, as this would lead to an upsurge in demand. This belief led him to create the American Selling Force, a committee that would act as the company's traveling salesmen. These workers were trained on a universal script and paid commissions as they visited businesses to promote their products. They showed people how the machine worked. They even went as far as setting up real-life product demonstrations using real money and real products to show how the cash register worked and how business owners would make more profit from its use. Alongside this, the NCR also began the acquisition of smaller competing firms to form a monopoly. To boost productivity, Patterson prioritized the welfare of his workers and would provide female employees with coffee and soup for lunch. Machine operators were provided with actual chairs with backrests instead of stools. He provided his workers with indoor bathrooms and also implemented a ventilation system that provided clean and fresh air to his workers. Patterson even had a doctor's office in his factory to assist injured workers as quickly as possible. And the result of these efforts? Through aggressive marketing and advertising, by 1914, the company was producing 110,000 cash registers every year. In 1906, the company manufactured its first electric cash register. Patterson died on the 2nd of May in 1922. At the time of his death, the company had produced about 2 million register machines and even ventured into producing other business machines. During the First and Second World Wars, the NCRC contributed to the United States war efforts by manufacturing plane engines, shell fuses, and code-breaking machines. Even after the death of Patterson, the National Cash Register Company has continued to dominate the retail cash register business. During the 1950s and 60s, the company began the production of computers. It changed its name to NCR Corporation in 1974 to symbolize the diversification of its product line. In 1991, AT&T acquired the NCR Corporation but decided to end its control of the corporation in 1997. In 2009, the corporation announced the company's move to Duluth, Georgia. The NCR Corporation continues to operate and specialize in the sale of office equipment. The company diversified its income stream and entered the banking equipment business, a very prudent choice as it currently is the company's largest source of revenue and profits. NCR boasts of being the largest maker of ATMs but derives most of its revenues from selling software and similar services. Now relocated to Atlanta, the company is also a giant in retailing and restaurants. Annual revenue is about $7 billion. Dayton's economy will forever be grateful to Patterson's business acumen, but his greatest contribution might as well be what he did during the Great Flood of 1913. The flood is taught down to this day in local schools, but the teachers may not be describing it well enough. Over 300 people lost their lives in the flood, and Dayton had to institute martial law as looters ran riot in the street. Patterson turned his factory into an emergency shelter during the flood, and provided food and medical care for over 2,500 displaced persons on a daily basis. His employees shifted from regular operations to building nearly 300 boats for rescue operations. Other branches of the NCR facilities became Ohio National Guard and the American Red Cross Relief Stations. At the time, Patterson, who was 68 years old, personally risked his life leading a boat to help stranded individuals and families. As a private company, NCR spent nearly two-thirds of its profit in 1913 on rescue and relief efforts. The company further allocated $600,000 to study how the community could prevent future floods. Patterson also donated money to help build playgrounds and parks and provided funds to build the first public kindergarten in Dayton. Today, the NCR Foundation has been established to serve communities selflessly. For example, it provided COVID-19 relief support and is responsible for about 100,000 vaccinations in India and the Philippines. All three organizations such as the ANA and Vlade Divac Foundation in Serbia and the Liga Solidaria in Brazil. The foundation has helped youths and adults build a better future through STEM education initiatives, such as free coding and programming workshops and the development of Maker Lab spaces equipped for teaching hands-on design skills. John Henry Patterson lived on a farm but was wealthy. He learned from his elders how to manage the business and how to preserve this wealth. From the start, he worked in the family business where he found a problem that many businesses were facing. He formed his own business and started selling register machines. It was a huge success and later became one of the largest companies in the world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.